Hey, Chris Lipe here with some more Michael Jackson studio multi-track videos. This one, we've got Man in the Mirror, which was one of, if not the last song written for Bad. It was not written by Michael. It was written by C. Garrett and Glenn Ballard. Garrett also does some background vocals on it. And it features some amazing things in terms of production and arranging. The message of the song is awesome. And as Time Magazine put it way back when, probably the best use of a gospel choir in a pop song. Love the blends, how Michael's voice interacts with the choir, frees him up to do his signature ad-libbing and emoting over this flowing track. And the instrumentation, the Quincy Jones era, I mean, enough said. This is a singing channel. I get to teach people how to sing by pulling from their vocal influences, their idols. Oftentimes when people try to sing like their favorite singers, they go about it completely the wrong way. If you want to learn how to pull from your inspirations the right way without getting frustrated or comparing yourself to other singers who you think are better than you, click the link below and join my free voice course. I'll help you clear out the distractions and the fear and help you experiment with your voice in new ways. As has become the custom with these videos, we will start with the music and then we'll spend the bulk of our time on the vocals. I'm floored every time I get one of these multi-track sessions to hear how all of the different percussive elements, particularly in the Quincy Jones era, are layered together um, for just, just wonderful sounds, wonderful sounds. Here's uh, when the kit comes in. Just listen to how this builds. Start simple. Okay. Throw some bass in there. I mean, what, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I mean, there's a lot of tracks going on here, and it still sounds it sounds so simple and unified. I also find this interesting about the bass. Listen to the bass DI. So mono, mono DI here. Clearly a synth bass. But listen to the spread it has once we add the, the effects. It sounds like a chorusing effect. What I find interesting, just in, in modern recording, if you have a DI and you have, you know, these, these effects things, these are all direct. So... It could be that there's was some crosstalk or something when this stuff is being dumped to digital, but why am I hearing a headphone bleed? I don't know. It's strange, but I, I like this chorusing. It's it's one take. I like that you get the the depth, the meat, the bassy sound from the DI. clearly a lower extension and then you've got the width and the, the the sort of chorusing pitch effect with those other ones and just have to give a shout out to the incredible piano performance it happens after the key change Put that in with the drums and percussion. Oh. Oh. 
wasn't that run? Oh, man. Greg Fillingaines, incredible job on the piano. This particular passage right here shows you the power of, you know, we, we have these simple, layered, static, relatively static drums and percussion. And then the groove and the pocket, the pulling, the pushing of the beat and the soul comes from the, the acoustically played, performed instruments. Something that's missing in a lot of music today, where if everything is programmed, everything is quantized, you lose that, that push-pull relationship that you get like this. You get that that anticipation and that that movement that you just can't program. It has to be performed. Rhodes, Dan Huff, not Hoff, Huff's guitar. Love Dan Huff. Masterful arranging and execution. Now let's get to the vocals. What we have here is a sum of all of the lead vocals. And then we have breakouts of the uh, the Winans and the, the gospel choir section. So we can hear some of those isolated, which is super cool. And Michael's background vocals, his lead vocals, and anybody else who might be doing background vocals is summed in this stereo track. There's so much detail that you can hear here once you once you isolate this from the music. Anytime Michael gets a chance to lean in to other vocal performers on stage or in the recording, whatever, he just goes into a whole other universe with his vocal freedom. And you really get this sense, listening from the very beginning all the way through the end, how he continues to... I mean, key change is huge, but he continues to expand his his textures and tonalities and energy. In this song, there aren't many Michael Jackson songs that have this level of like starting here and ending up here from a vocal performance standpoint. And I think that speaks to how good of a collaborator he was, how he drew from the energy of other performers like not many other artists did. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make a change for once in my life. It's gonna feel real good gonna make a difference gonna make it right <laughs> As I signature you know snapping while he's on the mic uh the exits the percussive exits of his notes all things that we've come to know and love about michael listen to his vibrato here his vibrato changes from song to song but for once in my life life <laughs> this is a very chesty vibrato it's it's not like a lot of singers, and not like he does sometimes, where he tends to lean into his head. Life, right? It's not that. Life. And if you listen carefully, there's a bit more, and even if you look at the web, the uh, the waveform, you can see that it's it's more of an amplitude thing and less of a pitch thing. So almost like a tremolo, not necessarily a pure vibrato as we'd normally think about it. For once in my life. Life, life, less pitch variation and more, more dynamic variation. 
kind of cool to see and hear, kind of put a finger on why his vibrato sounds so different there. It's gonna feel real good, gonna make a difference, gonna make it right. Right there again. <laughs> As I turned up the collar on my favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. I see, the see, it's this kind of thing we don't hear enough of anymore. Hear how he finished mind, right? It's very exaggerated. My mind. He is ending that word on purpose. It's real easy as a vocalist to just mind, not have those sorts of pick-me-ups at the ends of phrases one of the reasons we like michael jackson so much is the way he exited his notes not just the way he sang the note started the note hit the pitch but the way he got out of it and connected it to other rhythmic aspects of vocal performance like beatboxing breathing blow in my mind i see the kids in the street with not enough to eat who am i to be blind pretending not to see them need a summer's disregard, a broken bottle top, and what meant so. Wait. Okay, listen to how the dynamics grow in his voice. It just, every time I hear it. They follow each other on the wind, you know. Clean. Because they got nowhere to go. That's the one I want you to know. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Asking him to change his ways. Yes. Hear how clean he is and then grits it up just enough and then cleans it back up for the for the starting of the hook. In other songs and angrier songs, because it calls for it, he can bring that, that perfect grit in and out where it needs to be. You'd think... That he would, you know, start gritty. Okay, let's be gritty for for the hook, for the chorus, because it's it's up, it's big. No, there's this sense of restraint. And I think also lyrically, it calls for a, a cleaner approach on the chorus. And so being attentive to what the song needs, not just what you can or can't do with your voice, is a, another huge lesson we can learn from Michael, particularly in this song. But I love how he brings the nah, 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 grit in in this in this brief pre-chorus pre-hook setting oh, cuz they got nowhere to go that's the one I want you to know i'm starting with the man in the mirror i'm asking him to change his ways and no message could have been in the club if you want to make the world a better place take a look at yourself and then make a change Oh, that cool riff there, or ad lib, run. In the way, it's never smart to try to get the exact notes or inflection that Michael does, but. Listening to something like that and then trying in your own voice, it sounds like he's moving his mouth and his tone around a ton, even as he's moving those those notes around. Oh, 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 yeah. What does that inspire me to do with my own voice that I wouldn't have otherwise been inspired to do, even if it sounds nothing like what Michael's doing? That's why I love listening to Michael, is that I sound nothing like him. Nothing. I can't do almost, I can, I can do almost nothing that he does. But when I when I try to put some of his ideas in my own voice, I almost always discover something like just that right there. Uh, 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 I've been a victim of been a victim of. When was the last time that you, if you sing, did something like that, saying with that amount of aggression, conviction, and percussive overload, percussive overload? You think you might think you're being stupid if you're being that exaggerated. Michael Jackson wasn't stupid. There's so much we can take from his his range of performance. I'm not just talking about vocal range, although that's impressive too. His dynamic range, his rhythmic range. Don't be afraid to experiment like this. Uh, uh -huh. uh, 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 I've been a victim. 
the move A selfish kind of love It's time that I realize There too, like the way he, he made his tone different Listen here A selfish almost like a uh, yeah yeah just clearing his throat and then listen what he doesn't realize a selfish kind of love it's time on love selfish kind of love so uh, uh, so different in tone timbre and placement kind of love it's time that i realize it's time that i realize it's time that i realize it's time that I realize. His tone is so cool and so unique because it's dynamic, because it's always changing, because he places different notes, leans into vowels in differently, slightly unconventional ways, and draws you in with the variety. So many singers, oh, I'm trying to find my best tone. What tone do you think I... Use all sorts of different tones and let all sorts of different colors. You don't see hardly any picture painted with one color. Very colorful, lots of different tones, lots of depth is what draws us into all forms of art. Why should it be any different in how we pursue great vocal tone? Love. It's time that I realize <laughs> there is love we know. Not a nickel to love. Could it be really me pretending that they're not alone? Oh, well, oh, deeply scarred. Okay, here we go. Somebody's broken heart and a washed out dream. They follow the pattern of the wind you see. Cause they got no place to be That's why I'm starting with me I'm Oh, I love those background vocals there That's why I'm starting with me Starting with me Totally clean And and then with That's why I'm starting with me Starting with He's got that wonderful grit that he's placing just for this little section And then That's why I'm starting with me I'm starting with the man Him to change his ways. Oh. It's actually kind of cool. The, this on this chorus, there was more attack, more compression, more grit at the beginning, and then he cleaned it up. It wasn't like the last one. He really hit that I'm harder. It was more nasal, not I'm, but I'm, and then he backed off. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Oh. Light. I'm asking him to change his ways. Oh. And no message could have been any clearer. Yep, he's he's upping the intensity. And no message could have been any clearer. <sighs> if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself, then make a change. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Yeah. I'm asking him to change his ways. <laughs> and no message... I got to hear the way that harmony goes over this one section again. Him to Okay, then we'll go to this part where the choir and all that stuff kicks in. Oh my, this is so cool. Now, look. Listen to the ah, that release there, just perfectly positioned as a, as a percussive instrument, really. And I love how he leans into the word no. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna mute the leads and just listen to Winans and the choir tracks here so we can fully appreciate them. And then we'll add Michael and the other background vocals back in because this is where we really get that sense of Michael transferring into that other headspace, that other world where now this stuff is happening and he's free to just 
improvise, and, and soar. There aren't many vocalists that I would use that word, soar. Ah, okay, here we go. Change! Man. Man in the mirror, oh yeah! It's kind of cool, too, to hear like the Winans tracks. Change! Man in the mirror, oh yeah! It's beautiful. Smaller. You better change! All those imperfections of, of group vocals, like it's not pitch corrected, it's not time corrected. Ooh, ooh. So cool. Mind, man in the mirror, oh yeah. Yeah. You better change. Ooh, ooh. And. Hey, how bright the ah is up there. It's so cool. Oh, yeah. And in the headphone bleed, you can hear Michael in the background doing some of his, you know, whoops and, and improvs and stuff like that. It would be interesting to know uh, in what order or or how you know, these things were recorded because I get the, I get the feeling, I get the energy from Michael that he was reacting to these, these group parts in, in his vocals. So maybe, maybe he did the improvs, uh, at the same time these guys were recording to get that sort of, or, or maybe not, maybe he was just that good at visualizing uh, what was going to be there and transporting himself to that place, knowing that these were, were going to be there. Now listen to the, to the choir. We're going to add the choir in here to the, to the Winans group. Change. Okay. So now we got, Change. Oh, here's just the choir. Okay, so let's let's see if we can get some clues from the headphone bleed. Aha! So there is headphone bleed in of of Michael in the Winans tracks, but but you don't hear that with the choir. When you close your heart, then you close your mind. In the mirror, oh yeah. Well, we don't want to there. I love those little incidentals. But you do hear the headphone bleed of Michael that includes Michael in this section. That man! That that section right there. So if I had to make an educated guess, the choir parts were, were recorded before Michael's final parts were recorded. They were doing their things, and then Michael was able to go in and, and perform to the laid down choir, and then the Winans did their stuff after the choir and after Michael did his his ad libs. Okay, let's put it all together. One of my favorite Michael Jackson moments is in this song. So much energy, and his voice is this, this instrument. It's rhythmic. It's propelling the track forward, and it's, it's, it sounds so off the cuff, even though we know he's so well rehearsed. Now, 
Now here's with 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 the with the whoops. Listen to how the the choir and group vocals interact in light of this and what it what it spurs on in Michael. Change. Hear that foot tapping? Okay, listen to that one section again. It's like he's revving down with those yeah yeahs. The brakes have been put on and he's going, oh, okay. And then you 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 connect it to the rest of the song. So the, the way that he crescendos and decrescendos with his voice and and sort of sort of foreshadows where he's going is really really cool It's like this call and answer thing that that's happening, where you've got you've got Michael at his at his grittiest and in, intense uh, riffing. He's he's vocal riffing here, and uh, like you know, a guitar player leaning into a, a bent note over and over again. You know, it, it's just. <laughs> percussive the man in the mirror like it's intentionally short there getting out of the way of what uh, you know what michael has the chance to do here that is an amazing line Hear that hear the step in his notes there? Starting with the man in the mirror. Starting with the man. Starting with the man in the mirror. Man in the mirror. So bluesy. He does it so fast, right? Starting with the man in the mirror. Man in the mirror. That's hard. Man. Getting that that step right there. And, and and having the compression, the grit over it too, that fast. Starting with them, starting with the man in the mirror. Whew. Starting with the man in the mirror. Man in the mirror. You got it. You got it. Start with the man in the mirror. A dagger, cool. <sighs> like I said, the interaction between the group vocals and Michael's energy at the end and how it opens up. Michael's energy continues between the track and the choir arrangements. It continues to open up and just gives you this like, yeah, oh, I'm empowered. It's so well connected to what the lyrics are saying. And uh, yeah, just special, priceless. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. These videos can tend to be long. 
Again, if you'd like more help uncovering how you can be inspirational with your own voice by drawing from others that you are inspired by, click the link below and join my free course. We'll see you for more.